Hey there. So today I've got a technical topic for you, and it's something that I just learned this week. Um, I had encountered it before, I thought it was cool, so I want to share it with you, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll learn something from this video as well. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the differences between a blocking and a non-blocking switch. And so first of all, the question is, what is a switch? Well, here's a switch. Uh, a switch is just a network device that interconnects network devices. So on this switch, it's a D-Link uh, gigabit switch. I can have five different devices. I can plug in, you know, to this uh, to the switch, and it's just going to connect those devices together. Now, in a switch, um, every port gets the full bandwidth of the switch. So if I have a computer plugged into port one and another computer plugged into port two, well, this is a gigabit connection, and this is a gigabit connection, and uh, my computers are connected at gigabit speed. Now, what happens if I have five computers, I plug them all in at the same time, and I want to get a gig speed from all of them simultaneously. Does this little box have the capacity to deliver me, you know, five gigs of throughput on every device? Well, I don't know if this device does or not, but that's the concept of blocking versus non-blocking switches. In a blocking switch, um, if every port is connected, if the switch cannot provide full bandwidth speed, to all ports simultaneously, it's a blocking switch. If it can provide full speed to all ports simultaneously, well, that's a non-blocking switch. So um, you can imagine that in a home environment, we're pretty unlikely to need to push a gig of speed through all ports simultaneously. So lots of small office, home office, and home switches, they're blocking switches because they're made to be cheap, right? This is a $20 switch. Um, you can't expect a whole lot from it necessarily. So if I plug in my devices and ask it for, you know, five gigs of throughput, I don't know if I'm going to get that from this particular device. But what about in a large enterprise or a data center or an ISP, right? Their switches, you know, performance is really important. So having non-blocking switching with those big switches, it's really important, right? They got to get the maximum speed they can. So how do they do that? Well, they use uh, something called an ASIC. It's an application-specific integrated circuit. So with this uh, special circuit, um, it can take the ports on a switch and manage them so that they can operate at wire speed, you know, the full capacity of the switch, uh, without any degradation of performance. Um, switches, like I said, this is a cheap $20 switch, but imagine a big, you know, 48-port big iron switch being used at an ISP, if it's going to be non-blocking, it's going to be expensive, right? Those are those $10,000, $20,000 switches that you uh, sometimes see uh, advertised. Um, another thing I'll just mention is that lots of uh, big switches, they're modular, right? So they might have a bank of, you know, 16 ports that can be removed from the switch or added to the switch, depending on, on the configuration that's needed. Each of those modules will have its own ASIC as well, right? So that means every port can get, you know, whatever the speed of the switch is. It might be a gigabit, it might be 10 gig, but they'll do the processing in that module so that every port gets its, you know, whatever the speed is. And it will also, you know, work with the other modules to make sure that they get the full speed as well. And, and of course, that's why they're more expensive, right? More electronics in them uh, because they have better performance. Um, so you gotta pay for that more expensive. You know, but for us at home, you know, non-blocking switch is probably not uh, not necessarily a big deal. I think we'd rather have a $20 switch than a $120 switch uh, because we're probably never going to push all that bandwidth through the switch, right? We're going to use, might use all the ports, but we're not going to, we're not going to push that level of bandwidth. So yeah, so that's what I learned this week, blocking versus non-blocking switch. I thought it was kind of neat. Well, I hope you found that interesting as well, and maybe you've learned something too. You have a great weekend. Bye-bye.